and Sports Zone Saturday starts now. Well, a pair of old Gorman students are getting to experience once in a lifetime opportunities. USD and SDSU football both have tough tests at home this week, and a Harrisburg man has gone pro in cornhole. Welcome to Sports Zone Saturday. I'm Sean Bauer alongside Tanner Castora. Easton Zuger could only imagine what it would be like playing for the Sioux Falls Stampede while growing up. After earning a special invite to the Herd's training camp this summer, Zuger earned a roster spot, becoming just the second ever player born and raised in Sioux Falls to don the Stampede sweater. Playing for the Stampede was a childhood dream for Easton Zuger. For a lot of these guys, they can go to NHL games, Boston, New York. For me, it was always a Stampede game. Um, and that's been my dream since I was little. It was a dream I didn't know was achievable, um, but I worked every day and, and now I'm here wearing this sweater. It's, it's the best thing I could ask for. Zuger started playing hockey when he was four years old and throughout his childhood looked up to Stampede players, including another Sioux Falls native. Zach Thompson is kind of one that I remember from before I was even, uh, when he was even on the Stampede coming up, he worked with me at camps and then he became the first local to, to put the sweater on, so he's a big name for me. Easton spent several seasons as a stick boy for the herd. Um, it was my first taste of being behind the scenes, getting to know the guys a little bit more. Um, and the coolest thing was that I worked for about two years at the old convention center with my buddies. Um, and then we worked through the transition into the Clark Cup winning year of 2015. Zuger tried out for the Stampede last year, but says he wasn't ready. He put in the work this off season to earn a roster spot. He hasn't uh, been handed anything. He's earned everything he's got and, and uh, a little bit of an underdog story, but those are the kind of kids you root for too. Undrafted, but that didn't phase me. You know, I, I continued working, uh, continued to prove myself, prove everyone that, that I am uh, ready, ready to be here. After spending last season in Maine and in Arizona before that, Zuger is happy to be back home. Two years is the best thing I could ask for. Um, home cooked meals, I mean, help with my laundry. I'm not messing up all the time. and uh, It just makes life a lot easier. Um, I'm back at school now at O'Gorman High School. Get to be back around my friends. Uh, it's, it's kind of a dream come true there too. While he's donned the Stampede sweater twice already this season, wearing it for Saturday's home opener will mean a little more. I've only ever been a guy on the other side of the glass, so now it's I can't imagine what it's going to feel like going, going through those doors ready for battle with, with these guys that are now my family. And Zuger becomes just the fifth South Dakota born player to play in the USHL. He and the herd will welcome Lincoln to Sioux Falls tonight for their home opener. Puck drop set for 6.05. Another Old Gorman standout athlete got to chase a dream at first as Bergen Riley spent the past two weeks playing for the U.S. under 18 volleyball team at the World Championship in Durango, Mexico. Riley helped lead the U.S. team to a bronze medal finish and spoke with Kellan's Don Jorgensen about that experience. When you were playing at this level... The playing was just crazy. It's unlike anything I've ever played. Bergen Riley of O'Gorman says you better learn to adapt fast. It was different for sure. It's like playing against some of the best people in the world. How do you think you played? Um, I think it got better throughout the tournament. I think it was kind of a shock at the beginning, just how insane these people were. Um, but I think I got more comfortable towards the end of the tournament. Now that the 6'1 junior setter is back home, Riley says she can focus on her own high school team and the remaining volleyball schedule. Her goal is to get back to state and defend their state title from a year ago. But Riley says she won't forget how good some of the players were while playing in Mexico. The level of competition is crazy. Like um, a lot of the Europe teams play in pro leagues over there and they're training year round together. And so we had only had a week and a half to prepare for this tournament against teams who had been training for years. Which is why winning the bronze medal was no small feat. Bergen played her first match back with O'Gorman on Tuesday, helping the Knights to a 3-0 sweep over Brandon Valley. Well, you've probably played cornhole at a tailgate before a game or even at a backyard barbecue with friends. But for Harrisburg resident Matt Ryan, he's turned the sport into a second career. Matt Ryan's pursuit of playing competitive cornhole began six years ago as he and a friend were looking to play others around the area. We called a couple places and we found a place and we started playing and we thought we were pretty good and once we got up started playing against some of these guys we're like we are not good we were getting 
beat 2-0 every single time. And While balancing work and raising a family, Ryan used Fridays and weekends to continue to work on his craft. Soon after, he would start to see the rewards of his efforts. About my second year when I really started playing and I was starting to like really compete and I uh, ended up winning my first singles and doubles uh, championship in South Dakota. And at that point, that's when I was like, okay, you know, maybe we're onto something here. Ryan competes in the Mid-North Conference, a section of the American Cornhole League. Players of all skills and ages are eligible to compete, but Ryan's play always stood out. He was even offered a chance to play professionally three years ago. Turned it down, just had a lot of stuff going on, I had two young kids. With some encouragement from friends, Ryan decided this year was the right time to turn pro. Yeah, I, I wanted to be able to make sure I left everything out there and you know, did everything that I could to uh, make this a, a possibility. So He's now one of 256 professional cornhole players in the ACL and the first from the Mid-North Conference to sign a pro contract. It's huge for growing the sport. We'll get a, a lot of recognition from Matt being out there and and getting the, the conference mentioned, you know, on the ACL pro, pro listings. Just looking to play competitive cornhole six years ago is a decision that Ryan is happy he made. I used to have a bunch of other hobbies, you know, it wasn't just bags. You know, I used to golf, I used to fish and hunt. It's like, man, I just, this is what I enjoy doing. I can make a little side money doing it. And like I said, it just keeps my competitiveness, you know, right there, so. That's, that's great. I love it. Matt will play next at the ACL Open in Rapid City on October 22nd, which will be the first national open in South Dakota. It will be a top 10 showdown in Brookings this afternoon as SDSU welcomes Southern Illinois to town. We'll take an in-depth look at that matchup after the break. SDSU is off to a 4-0 start for the first time since 2000. However, the Jacks are now preparing for a gauntlet of tough contests. As they'll play seven straight conference games including matchup with four ranked opponents. Keller Land's Grant Sweeter previews their matchup against Southern Illinois. SDSU has cruised to a 4-0 start as they have outscored their opponents by 156 points. Much of this success can be credited to the quick maturation of transfer quarterback Chris Oladokun. Early in the season, Zach said that Chris Oladokun is the best quarterback uh, that he's seen on the field. Now, that doesn't take anything away from the Taron Christians or Zach Lujans or Austin Sumners, uh, Keaton Heides, Jabori Gibbs. What it does is it says uh, Chris Oladokun's a special, special player because those other guys had really good careers and are having good careers. The Jacks have played one conference game thus far, but now they prepare to play seven conference opponents in a row, starting with eighth-ranked Southern Illinois. Persistence assistants remind me business as usual. Don't wait, make one game bigger. Don't make one conference uh, opponent bigger. And so uh, I've already told them how good uh, Southern Illinois is, and they'll see that on film. SDSU met the Salukis in the COVID-delayed spring regular season of 2021. They later met them again in the postseason. We played them twice last year, or actually this year. So it'll be the third time in a, in a year that we've played South Dakota State. They beat us um, every time. We, uh, you know, got to go on the road again against, um, a uh, you know, really unbelievable team. Uh, I think Coach Stiegelmeyer has those guys playing at a super high level. I think they're very similar. They do a lot of stuff on offense. They always have. Uh, I think that's, uh, you know, reflective of Nick and his, his offensive background. And defensively, I think they've gotten better in the sense that, that uh, their players are a year older. I know they have some guys that are new, uh, but I do think they play really good defense. A key to Saturday's game will be how well the SIU defense can handle SDSU star running back Pierre Strong Jr. The senior has rushed for 486 yards and five scores in just four games. You know, one of the best backs that we've ever seen here, uh, you know, playing against him. I'm ready for him to graduate, that's for sure. But he's, uh, he's a great player and he's playing as, you know, he, he's back playing as good as that, that he, you know, he's ever played really. Their coordinator moves those inside guys a bunch, gives you a bunch of different looks, a lot more variety on the inside than, than uh, on the outside by the defensive ends. So it's going to be up to our big guys uh, to be able to pick up those movements and, and, and knock them off the ball. And then Pierre, when he's in, open, in the open space, uh, he's really tough to bring down. 
Saturday will be a top 10 showdown in Brookings, with the winner adding an important game to their playoff resume. With great teams, you look around the country, Alabama and, and all the, the top teams in FBS, it's, uh, they're going to line up and execute and play really well, just fundamental football. And that's what you get with South Dakota State. They're going to execute. They're going to out-physical you. Uh, and so it's uh, – we got to line up and do the same thing. I'm really excited because this is where you set yourself up to, to uh, try to compete for the prize at the end. You know, I, I, the non-conference was important. Uh, the Indiana State game obviously kicked it off. Now there's this this long run of conference teams. Many of them are ranked, uh, and and it's it's an opportunity for you to, to if you're if you're if you're good enough to solidify yourself to get into the playoffs. In Brookings, Grant Sweeter, Kelloland Sports. The Jackson Salukis will cross paths today in Brookings with kickoff time set for 2 p.m. USD also has a big matchup today, hosting 13th ranked North Dakota as the Kyles look for their second straight conference win. We'll have more on the matchup coming up next. The South Dakota Kyles are fresh off their first conference win of the season, a 38 to 10 victory over Indiana State. Now they'll face their second ranked opponent in three games. Kellen's Grant Sweeter previews the Kyles' upcoming matchup with North Dakota. USD scored 14 points in the fourth quarter to pull away from Indiana State, sending the Kyles to one and one in Missouri Valley Conference play. One of the things you have to do, um, you know, to win games in the Valleys, you got to play well in the fourth quarter. You know, a lot of games are going to come down to uh, the last possession. And, you know, even though, you, you know, this game maybe didn't come down to the last possession, um, you know, the way we played in the fourth quarter and being able to, to play with a lead is an uh, important experience for guys. Now USD will prepare for a tough slate of games as they'll play four ranked opponents in their final six games of the season. We had an opportunity to play uh, a ranked football team, you know, a nationally ranked football team again. And, you know, we had, had an opportunity to that down in Missouri State and felt that uh, we left a few plays, you know, on the on the table down there and and now we play North Dakota team. It's really important that we work hard and focus on preparation for USD. This is a team that's scoring a lot of points. Uh, they're getting off to fast starts. I think they're very good on defense. They're big and physical up front and really play hard and are creating turnovers. The Coyotes are scoring more than 31 points per game, which is nearly two touchdowns more than they scored in the 2021 spring season. Much of that success can be credited to the growth of starting quarterback Carson Camp. You know, Carson uh, you know, played uh, with uh, greater poise um, Saturday. You know, he had really good pocket presence. He actually was... You know, extended a couple of plays, made a, made a couple of plays with his feet. Well, you know, he's got uh, Carter Bell and Cody Case are two guys that I think are really skilled, and they use them well in their offense. And uh, Samson, the tight end, talented player. But going back to camp, just a real competitor. You know, he plays hard, uh, can get out and hurt you with his feet. So anytime a guy can get out and scramble and and you got to be concerned, you know, it changes your plan a bit, how you can attack them. The defense has also seen significant improvements from spring to fall, as the Coyotes are allowing eight points less per contest, including just 95 yards rushing per game. Defensively, we're playing with a lot of confidence right now. You know, one of the, the big priority going into the fall season was to be better against the run and you know, we've we've shown uh, over the the first five weeks uh, that we are a better defense against the run. Now, you know, as we get into the league and play some of the teams that you're going to play in the league, you're going to get tested, you know, more significantly than than maybe we have, um, you know, to this point. Saturday's contest will be a big one for the Coyotes as they'll look to keep their playoff hopes alive, while also seeking a win over 13th ranked North Dakota. If you're going to be in it uh, in this conference race um, at the end of the year, you you have you've got to you know you got to play well and win games at home, and then find a way to to win a couple on the road. And um, um, you know that's 
that's this kind of game. You know, we're, we're looking at a stretch on our schedule where we're going to play ranked team after ranked team after ranked team. And if you want to be a ranked team yourself, you got to beat some ranked teams. I know their staff quite well, and we're looking forward to the challenge. And it'll be a, a big challenge going on the road, but uh, against a very good opponent. In Vermilion, Grant Sweeter, Kelloland Sports. Coyotes and Fighting Hawks also crossing paths today down in the Dakota Dome, though. Kickoff there set for 2 o'clock. Well, the month of September has come to a close, so it's time for the plays of the month. See which plays made the cut and which play tops our list after the break. September was a busy month for local high school football teams in South Dakota. Now that it's October, our very own Grant Sweeter has a look at September's top five plays of the month. The first honorable mention comes from the President's Bowl as Washington's Thomas Peterson somehow makes the catch over a defender while getting a foot in bounds for the touchdown. The Warriors would earn a 24-0 win over O'Gorman. The second and final honorable mention features a one-handed juggling catch from Howard's Jay Cypher. He uses his right hand to knock the ball down and his left hand to make the touchdown catch. The Tigers would cruise past Canastota Freeman 59-28. to The fifth best play of the month comes from O'Gorman's Henry Theobald, who is attempting to break up a pass, but then he traps the ball against the receiver and brings in the interception with just one hand. This play would help the Knights, but it wasn't enough as they suffered a 21-17 loss to Lincoln. Checking in at number four is a great interception by Garrettson. Canasota Freeman is attempting to start a drive when Tage Ortman's pass is tipped on the sideline and then intercepted by Dylan Kent, who gets two feet in bounds. Despite his effort, the Blue Dragons would fall by six. The number three play of the month comes from a 9-double-A contest where Viberg Hurley's Hayden Gilbert goes up into double coverage and brings in the catch, but then the ball pops up, so Gilbert has to pin the catch to his leg for the touchdown. Despite this great play, the Cougars would fall to Canastota Freeman. The runner-up play of the month features a tremendous play by Roosevelt's Osmaram Muhammad, who plays the ball perfectly. He uses his right hand to reach up and make the one-handed interception. Roosevelt would give the Tigers a battle, but Harrisburg would go on to earn a 38-34 win over the Rough Riders. The top play of the month features the final play from one of the best games of the week in the month of September. Lincoln trails by one as time was expiring. Schaefer on a deep heave, far as he can, tipped and caught! Touchdown! It's caught by Jack Smith! A 53-yard touchdown on a Hail Mary! That Tate Schaefer to Jack Smith touchdown earned the Patriots a 31-26 win over Watertown. That's a look at the top five plays from the month of September. If you'd like to see your top play featured on Kelloland, you can tweet to us using the hashtag Kellosports. In Sioux Falls, Grant Sweeter, Kelloland Sports. Uh, just some incredible plays there in the month of September. Hopefully October can live up to that hype too. Well, coming up next, we'll uh, take a look at our NFL picks for this Sunday. And welcome back to Sports Zone Saturday. It's already week five of the NFL season. That means we got another round of pick'ems. Sean, you picked 12 games correctly last week, jumping past me for second place. I'm still just one game behind him. Grant got 11 games right. He owns a four-game lead through four weeks. Well, we all correctly, correctly predicted a Rams victory on Thursday, but let's take a look at some of the games on Sunday. Starting with a battle of three and one teams, Packers taking on the Bengals on the road. I think we all like the Packers in this one. It's hard to doubt Aaron Rodgers right now. I know Cincinnati's an improved team. They're better than they were last year, but hard, hard to bet against that man in a Rodgers. It is. I'm going to go with the Pack, but this is a cool game, kind of like 
the guy who's been there, Rodgers, maybe the new guy coming into the, the spotlight in Joe Burrow. I'm going to go with the pack, but I really thought about taking the Bengals with the way that Burrow commands that offense. I'll go with the Packers as a safe pick, but, you know, if this game was played maybe four or five weeks from now, I wouldn't be so shocked if the Bengals did get a win. Yeah, of course, Cincinnati played Minnesota super tough at home, beat mm -hmm. them, um, so don't count them out, and uh, you never know, road games in the NFL, anything can happen. Up next, speaking of the Vikings, well, they got the Lions at home. We're all picking Minnesota, so Tanner, give us your reasons why Minnesota. Well, first off, the Lions at some point are going to win a game. They've been tough this year, kind of like those two New York teams last week who found a way to get a win. At some point, the Lions are going to get it done. They've been competitive. But I got to tell you, I know they're one in three. And I thought before the season started that the Vikings would struggle. But I'm actually, I've been impressed. I think they're a pretty good team. And I think they take care of business at home. Yeah, I think being at home is the big difference there. Plus, they are, they're desperate. You can't go to 1-4 and four if you want to make the playoffs. Um, up next, Broncos at Steelers. An intriguing AFC matchup. Couple splits here. You and I picked Pittsburgh. Grant going with Denver. Now, my only thing is Pittsburgh's kind of in that same boat. They're, right. they're at home. Right. They're desperate. The Broncos, Teddy Bridgewater had a concussion last week. You don't know his status. Drew Locke, if he's in there, mm -hmm. hasn't shown to that consistency. So I like the Steelers and their defense at home. I just don't think Denver's for real. And Pittsburgh is one of those franchises where it always seems like when they need a win, they get a win. Yeah. And up next, we got your Cleveland Browns at the Los Angeles Chargers. Me and Grant went L.A. Be before I speak, why are you taking the Chargers? They're at home, their defense is really good. Justin Herbert is looking like he's taking that second leap as a second year player. So I just like the Chargers. I think they're a very underrated team still, despite the resume. I think they're a good team too. I just think the Browns are better. I think they're for real. Baker playing with that torn labrum in his non-throwing shoulder, showing some toughness. I think Cleveland gets it done. I don't know what the score is. I just think it's a team this year that finds a way to win ugly, to win pretty, however they do it, they get the W this week. Yeah, I think they just have a better offensive line than the Vikings, so I think that Herbert will have a little more time to get plays. And then finally, Sunday night football, Bills and Chiefs. This is a rematch of the AFC Championship. I believe they're Chiefs at home at Arrowhead Sunday night. I went with them for pretty much that reason, and it's Patrick Mahomes. You and Grant both went with Buffalo, so I, quick, I think quick reason. Buffalo's a better team. They have played better, they've looked better. I like Buffalo on the road to pull off the upset. All right, well, you can see the rest of our picks by visiting this story on Kelloland.com. We'll take a look ahead to next week's sports calendar when we return. You're watching Sports Zone Saturday. Welcome back to Sports Zone Saturday. Before we leave, let's take a look ahead to next week's sports calendar and Stampede back in action Friday at the Premier Center. They're hosting rival Sioux City. And then softball, boys golf, and girls tennis state champs were crowned this past week. Next Saturday, it'll be the state soccer titles up for grabs. You got Class A girls kicking things off, followed by the A boys, and then it'll be the Double A girls and Double A boys that night. All games being held out at Howard Wood Field. USF football back home next Saturday. They host you, Mary, at 1. And USD football on the road at Northern Iowa. Remember, that game will air on Kello Extra at 4 o'clock next Saturday. Got plenty of football action coming your way tonight with Augie, USD, SDSU all at home, plus a Crosstown High School matchup football between Lincoln and Jefferson. Well, looking forward to that. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of Sports Zone Saturday. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll see you back here next week.